What in the world is this? What kind of project have I gotten you all into this time? Well, we're looking at a, a demo shed that I bought years ago and the floor rotted out and uh, I have not been able to take a break and put it back together. Well, that break came today. I was supposed to get on the road to storage, slightly loaded up with mini parts, but it was getting too late in the morning and I didn't want to lose the day in traffic. You do a couple hundred miles and you arrive and you're, you're tired, you're not motivated. And if the sun is out, that really gets you. So I suddenly found myself with a day without any pressure, a day where I could pick something off the list and do it, a day where no one expects me to be anywhere. I worked by myself anyway, so no one was waiting on me. And what did I decide? Well, in front of my house, I have too many trucks. And this is a parking spot where this shed is sitting, has been sitting. And underneath the shed is a very useful trailer. If I fix the shed and stand the shed up then I can get the trailer I can take the trailer back to where it's supposed to go and then I have a parking spot and I can put a truck here and that truck I'll pick one that's not running is closer to the workshop and the truck might might get a second life after all you know what's interesting when you get a day where there's no pressure and you get to work on something that day only shows up if your plans failed so failure brings you to relaxation. <laughs> All right, let me get started. If you're thinking this shed's not worth saving, you are probably in the majority. And I can show you that there was another shed that I decided not to save. I can show you bits and pieces of that video if you want. This one, I think I can save it. Plus, I'm enjoying this. This board is 70 and a quarter long to the bottom of that plate, but this one's 72 inches long to where I can measure it. And then this one is 71 inches. So what's going on here? Like no two are the same. Well, I like these puzzles. I love this kind of stuff. There's a roof that's falling in on itself that I'm going to have to find my way and figure out where to start. Once someone else does the work it's real easy but being the first one there I like those puzzles so guess what 71 inches is basically 70 and a quarter plus a piece of three quarter so if a piece of three quarter joined here there are no nail holes going this way so that was just an exterior trim piece that's why it was a little longer and then 72 that's correct on the outside but if we measure from that top plate and run the tape measure across to here we see that it's also 71 inches so that's our number to work with now I can look at this other wall and I can see discoloration there so there probably was a piece of three-quarter wood there at one point and these sheds come out of factories where I'm sure they're not winging it they are making precise cuts on every stud. They're not making that mistake. Where this side came off, you can see the nails. Oops, sorry. You can see the nails there. The fake T111, the thin 3 8 plywood, it just came off, left the nails still in their places. So what we'll do is we'll pop those nails out and we'll get that panel back into place. I have six sheets of this in storage. If I wanted to replace this, I could, but I'm probably not going to enlarge this shed. I want to I need a small space where I can tuck things in before they get shipped. I like these kind of puzzles. I think I got this one figured out. Oh, I've got the walls tacked in. I use screws and I got them in place. It's not strong enough to flip up on its own so I can't flip it down onto a floor and I've built the floor frame and that's two by four material standing up now some of this stuff here is rotted out and it's about two and a quarter inches so if we go back this is our 71 inches here it matches on the other side and this is 70 and a quarter 
matches on the other side. So 70 and a quarter probably had a three quarter inch floor here, which would equal this 71 length. So the floor was, this was standing on the floor and this was just against the floor. So I've copied that design. So my thinking is I want to shorten everything by two and a quarter inches. And that'll take care of all of this here. So if I shorten this, there's our three quarter inch overhang, shorten it to two and a quarter, and then add three quarters for future decking. So subfloor, so that'll be three inches. I'm gonna cut it at the three inch point there on both sides. And then slip the floor into place. And prior to doing that, I can make this cut, straighten this out. The front and back will straighten out another way. And more than likely, the doors will close against the frame. But if need be, I'm gonna shorten the doors too. See that? I marked six inches off the original bottom. Six inches off the original bottom. And six inches off the original bottom. So if I goof up on these cuts, or if I need a reference point from the original, I have this line inside. Sound good? Good. I found a straight board, or straight edge. I lined it up like that, made sure it was parallel to the top plate here and here, drew a line, that's this line, then double checked it that we were parallel and we are parallel. I made a saw cut here, a saw cut there, that transferred over to the outside here and here, drew a line between them and I'll make this cut. It's gonna splinter this way. But remember we have that 60 tooth blade that we got at that yard sale. Well, that blade was a dollar well spent. It uh, chipped up a little bit here. There, not as much. This is like a rough sawn look. I'm probably either gonna caulk the bottom of this and then paint it, or just gob paint all over it. Aw, shucks. I had an idea. I hate when this happens. So this is the joint. This is the stud coming down. This is our new floor. And there's going to be a three quarter inch space here. That's where the flooring will go. So I realized, you know, in storage, I not only have plywood scraps, but I have those tiny Tico hangers. I could wrap a tiny Tico hanger around here, put the floor on, and when they go together, use just a few screws, and that would be a really, really strong joint. The reason we need that to be super strong is the trim boards that are the framing for the sheets, they pass by this deck, and they don't really mount well. I'm gonna have to use some kind of hardware like something to this effect or a piece of wood or something but in order to drop the shed in its position I need something that's going to hold it strong and not going to shift you see on that side okay so that's now you're looking at the floor and the wall and I would say all this is going well but I'm going to storage tomorrow and I know I have small rough plywood scrap there and what I need is a piece of plywood from here to here from there to there and then I can put the, the floor onto the shed it'll hold and get the shed in position and then put the rest of the plywood in later I intend to make the floor out of plywood scrap there's no reason to like use a full sheet when I have scraps the plywood scrap idea wins because plywood scraps they they either are in the dumpster or in the way where else better to use them than the bottom of a shed and think about it 
For those of you that have sheds, do you even know what the floor looks like? Come on now, be honest. I thought so. Now, but it's uh, it's a good idea. It'll help me. I'm gonna have to stand this thing up by myself. So I need those joints that we were talking about earlier to hold. This is just temporarily on there so this doesn't fall on anyone. I'll put some tarps over it and then I'm off to the donut shop. I mean to the hardware store to, um, yeah, yeah, buy materials. That's it. Good grief, this plywood was thirsty. It soaked up a half of a container. That's five quarts. So five-eighths of a gallon, say. I don't mind it using up all the oil. I can get more oil. But the problem that I see is it says something about manufacturers suggested you're supposed to change out your oil every three to seven thousand miles. This shed, it doesn't have a working odometer. I registered it historic so it didn't have to go through the state inspection. It doesn't even have lights. One oh four and a sixteen. One oh four and a sixteenth. We are square. Ready, set, go. Dippity doo da. What do you think? You're not saying anything. Ho hold on, hold on. Close your eyes. Okay. Now open them. Thanks for watching everyone.